Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. What have I got for you today? Well, it's pro level, tip top pro level at that. 1v1 ladder action. Why? Because you don't look like you're getting enough of it in your diet, quite frankly. We need to sort it out immediately and the best news is there's no news so we can go straight to it. It's going down on adaptive flooded tabula rasa. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching! Ka-ching! There we have it. A reworking of one of my all-time favorite team maps. We can see the flooded section here. We might talk about more of that in a second. But first of all, let's introduce our players up here at the top right in the red corner. Going Cyber and bless him. It's Balance Slave Noob. There he is, going first land. And down here at the bottom left, going Aeon in the blue corner. And going first air, it's uh, an apologies for anybody I might offend with my pronunciation here. Sasagaki Junzao. I'll be calling him Junzao today for obvious reasons. Sounds like somebody who should be fighting in the Sengoku Jidai. Do you remember that from what was it? The uh, the intro to uh, Shogun One, Creative Assembly's Total War masterpiece, the Age of the Country at War. I'm so Offending more people by doing the accent. I don't even know if that is Japanese-esque, so apologies. But let's face it, it's 2022. Being offended is the natural state of things, so I'm really just helping you exist. It's all good. Uh, and uh, what did we see here? Please, no first boomer. Yes, you shouldn't build old people first. That would be awful. awful. Mustn't do that. They don't like it. Uh, so t flooded tabula rasa. What have we got here? Oh, you probably actually... Actually, before I get too sidetracked, you probably want to see how they start things off because their glorious openings are a feature in Ladder. ladder. Uh, and I know you like to pass their openings off as your own. Uh, so what do we have here? We went first air for Junzao, three T1 mexes, early engineers up to an assorted sections of reclaim, what have you, and then going up to get the hydro. And then he's also queued up by the looks of things. One, two, three, four P gens. And then another air factory, and then another P gen. What do we have down here? Very similar. It's almost identical, I think, for Balanced Slave. He hasn't uh, added an extra P gen so far. He's gone four T1 P gens, and then going air factory. The main difference, of course, is that we're going to end up with a land factory and an air factory for Balanced Slave, whereas it looks like it's going to be two air factories there for Junzao. So back to the map. Obviously, those of you who uh, play Subcom or indeed have frequented this channel for a long time. Well, I used to see more of this map, or at least its full team version being played more often. Actually, you could play team on this, I imagine, adaptive sections. You'd have it uh, much more of a north-south split instead of the uh, east-west split. But you can see the two little ponds here. This was all beach, which has now been flooded. I used to think that this was uh, not beach, actually. This was more sort of greenish highlands, but so maybe it's been adapted a little bit. Uh, but anyway, that's essentially it. And then you had these two little areas here and here that would have to fight over. They had literally nothing to expand to. They had to set up shop. And these were sort of the two big offensive war corners here and here. And then the big battle in the middle. Anyway, it's good fun. Go play it, guys, after this. So make sure you watch it. First scout planes out. Anyway, I digress. These guys getting a good read on their opponent's layouts. It looks like... Uh, so, uh, I forgot how I was going to refer to him. That's it. Junzao was a little bit quicker getting his scout plane out, probably because he had an extra air factory to work with. Uh, so no surprises there. Reclaim side of things, that's what we're looking at. Some big rocks kicking around. A very big one there, 300. Some not quite so big ones dotted around next to the cliff edges here, 113 apiece. Just uh, waiting to be scoopy scoopersoned. Uh, we've got different colours. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, is this a new addition? Like, there's a green 12 there. Is that representing the area of tree line and how much, or the areas of tree? So this would be like 12 mass worth of trees, and so would this. It would make sense. I'll just in the comment section below if I'm talking complete twazak. Talking twazak? That's not even the thing. You can be a twazak girl. You can't talk twazak. Or maybe you can. Maybe that's something else I've gotten wrong slash right accidentally. Uh, Skyhook leaving base now for Balanced Slave, heading south. So this is going to be the feature. These guys are going to have to try and set up shop somewhere on their opponent's landmass up here at the top left and bottom right. We already have interceptors out for Balanced Slave Noob looking to shut down encroaching units. We had an engineer there for Junzao who's trying to get a land factory in play. But that was killed off almost immediately. So nice early work here from Balanced Slave. Can he get them on the ground? Yes, he can. 
that uh, transport isn't going to make it home, but at least he's got all four engineers on the land safe and sound. They're going to get work on get to work on a land factory ASAP. We have a uh, inbound bomber, however, moving over to this position, and for the moment, Jun Zhao in command of the skies over this position. Will he lose some uh, engineers, balance slave? Well, possibly, but importantly, he's got that land factory up and operational and has started to work on some more. Here comes the T1 bomber, and he's having trouble getting that first payload away, gets it off in the end and kills off one engineer, I think, and then gets himself shot down by what exactly? Oh, no, maybe not. No, he was... Ter I thought... I could have sworn I thought he was getting shot down off the side of the map, but he's not. He's still alive. 29 hit points to his name, and then he gets shot down. Absolutely insane by that uh, Sky Slammer. I could have sworn that he got shot down off the side of the screen there, but it was just the way it was turning, and he had absorbed fire already. But now we have a counter drop in inbound to the top left from Jun Zhao. Here comes a chariot fully laden with about six engineers on board. There are hostile interceptors buzzing around the area, but he's got a nice big escort detail covering his landing spot while he picks one. There it is. He looks like he's going to set, set up shop over here. Balance Slaves Com is not far away. There is a move command to push it up towards the top left-hand corner. If he's quick, he might be able to shut this down. Has he just scouted it? He's got a scout plane in the area. And that uh, that waypoint suggests he's well aware of the presence of these engineers. They've started work on two land factories, which is a little ambitious. A safer move would have been to go straight for the point defense and a radar to try and lock this area down and prevent Balance Slave from doing what he's just about to do. If he runs up and blaps these engineers, this little drop here of his will have all been for naught. And there we have it. No overcharge to get the job done right away. I imagine he hasn't had time to start thinking about energy storage as yet. And there goes the last engineer. Factories are working on Auroras, but I would imagine he's going to be able to shut this little incursion down. So that's going to give him an advantage potentially in the early game if he can kill off those factories. We already have a bridgehead over here, although it is being bombarded by the occasional T1 bomber. Got a couple of engineers who just got annihilated in that pass. There goes another one. So these three land factories are looking a little bit isolated. One engineer there trying to work on a tracer to help lock the skies down. Is he going to get it completed? Well, possibly, now that that bomber went after the factory instead of the engineer, and now a second engineer is moving in to assist. It certainly looks that way, so that's going to be the end of that T1 bomber. And that bottom right position there for Balanced Slave got just a little bit safer. If we move back up to Balanced Slave's comms position, you can see him... Oh, he actually ca- I like it. He didn't waste any time. He didn't destroy both factories. He captured one of them, so he now has access to his opponent's tech. Why not add Aeon capabilities to your own? Certainly seems like something a Cybran would do. Or a Borg. But there are similarities, shall we say. Collectivism. <laughs> and socialism. <laughs> Oh, uh, no politics. I've already been in trouble on the premium channel for making a joke about Trump. But uh, I, uh, I can't help it. You know, these people, these institutions, they are there to have pops up. Pops out every now and again. What have we got down here? Jun Zhao had enough of this infestation over here in the far east. Is now moving out with his commander. Uh, a little bit of a camera fail there. Apologies for that. He's got a little contingent of tinfoil auroras alongside him. We've got a forward land factory over here for Balanced Slave, which is probably going to walk right past Jun Zhao. Does he know about it? Well, he can see it on the old radar, but he hasn't discovered exactly what's there yet. Inbound Mantis getting chopped down, but soon there's going to be more Mantis than Jun Zhao can deal with with those auroras, so he brings his com in to seal that position. 
and those auroras move further north to find out what was going on up here. Apologies if you can hear my dog barking occasionally in the background. He's still upset about the whole FTX fiasco. I told him, don't store your tokens on an exchange, my man. Not your keys, not your crypto, but he didn't listen. Credit Swiss investments are in the toilet as well. It's generally not looking good for his finances. Speaking of finances, let's take a look at total mass accrued. An advantage so far for Balanced Slave, who is at, must be on about 20k by now. Still showing 19, but he's been on 19 for a while. So it's uh, about 19.5 versus about 16.5k total mass accrued in favor of Balanced Slave. Reclaim picture shows uh, 2k versus 1.4k. So not a huge difference, but like we saw at the beginning, there wasn't a massive amount of reclaim to be had on the map. We, uh, despite being 10 minutes in, not been a huge amount of opportunities to raise that reclaim figure. All of the mass, of course, was down in this sort of area and this sort of area. Although there's been fighting, there hasn't been a chance to comprehensively grab all of the mass yet. You can see most of it's still present. I imagine the big rock is gone. I can't remember where it was now. About 300 odd. Oh, was that? What was that? Was that a T2 gunship? Balanced slave. Has he got access to T2 air tech? Yes, he does. So that was a renegade, I think. And we've got another one here. Just around the eastern edge of the screen. And a uh, torpedo bomber as well. We are getting some naval play into the bargain. Worth mentioning, we've got... How many naval yards? One naval yard there for Junzao and another two over here sin sin soon excuse me, to be three for Balanced Slave. Getting the words out eventually. One forward sliver chopping down a mass extractor. So you should probably think about going for that naval yard. He's certainly aware of its presence, but he's more concerned about hampering his opponent's eco for the time being. And we also have T2 air tech for Junzao. Junzao going after the factories over here, one of which, of course, was that Aeon factory that was captured. If he does kill it though, it's not all lost for that Aeon Tech. We've got four engineers over here for Balanced Slave. We should probably think about moving at least one of those further east. Hold on to that Tech. Meanwhile, ground assault from Junzao underway over here at the uh, far bottom right of the map. So it looks like we've got more of a, a push into the naval side of things, potentially from Balanced Slave. And it looks like air dominance, for the main, for the meantime at least, might be with Junzao. Decent amount of interceptors here. We've even got some T2 Swift winds into the bargain. They've seen better days. Slightly damaged. That one's on just 144 HP. So the top naval yard over here, dispatched by this frigate, the only kill to its name. Finds a renegade, takes some pot shots before getting blown up by said renegade. Couple more spectres over here. Trying to cut down an auto gun to size. That's going to survive though on 76 hit points. Speaking of surviving, that position... Over here in the top left, still intact for Balanced Slave. Now, do you try and set up base over here? Because you would imagine at some point Junzao might attempt another invasion. Although he seems pretty absorbed right now in trying to deal with this situation. It's a tricky, multifaceted map here. Defense, attack, and the naval game thrown into the bargain. Little side island here on both sides with three mexes apiece. And Junzao actually has had that taken out there by gunship attack. 
Balanced Slave still in possession of one of the mass extractors on those side islands. Torpedo bombers harassing this T1 Navy of Balanced Slaves. Those uh, T1 subs still persisting in their attacks against those underwater mexes. Generated eco, Junzao is up by, well, less than a handful of mass, really. It's about three, four mass per tick. And uh, total mass accrued, Balanced Slave is, well, it's more or less neck and neck. He's probably up about 500 mass in total mass accrued and behind in about five mass per tick. So it's it's broadly speaking almost neck and neck in eco. Balanced Slave has really prioritized air production in the last couple of minutes, so I don't think it's fair to say with certainty that Junzao still has air dominance, although, of course, the T2 Swift Winds are potentially a deciding factor in that. That's a significant air advantage, so it's not just about numbers. In terms of T1 interceptors, we've got 67 there for Balanced Slave. Junzao with 26, but, of course... I can click on them. Apparently I can't. <laughs> Eight T2 Swift winds on top of that. So if this does kick off anytime soon, this will be an interesting air fight to watch. But speaking of interesting fights, handful of specters going after this position, taking down some of the exterior structures and then going after the factories. Is there an aerial response brewing? It certainly looks like it. Balanced Slave moving in over here, not seemingly aware of the inbound air threat coming in bef behind his fighters. That's a terrible engage for Balanced Slave. It's gone pretty darn well for Junzao. Are the Swift Winds and the surprise attack going to carry the day for the Aeon? He's turning tail and running now, and now it's his turn to shed some of those fighters in the rear. And I think all in all, Balanced Slave will be happy with the way that encounter played out. What's this? A bit of T2 floaty floaty naughty naughty as a blaze makes it onto enemy territory. Few vulnerable mexes over here potentially. What is that that's shooting at him over here? That Aurora is in range, astonishingly enough. Aurora is, of course, the uh, T1 tank with the largest range and the softest tank. Junzao taking a bit of fire here into the yellow. 7,000. 800 hit points on board that commander as he pushes out with a stream of spam westward on this bottom landmass. We do have T2 land factories operational on this landmass now for Junsa, one of which incidentally is the HQ, spitting out ascendants and uh, blazes as well. So that's where that first blaze emerged from. Made his way all the way up the left-hand side of the map. Two of them up there now, going after vulnerable mexes. Another one <laughs> making a very long-distance trip to get to his destination. Goes right past the comm. Manages, I'm assuming it was him managing to take out that mex. But also managed to get himself killed into the bargain. Where are we now? Generated eco. I look up there. It seems to favor Junzao now, although that might have been reclaim related, but it's 73 mass per tick each. Pretty much. We're getting the occasional spikes up and down. A 3k advantage still overall with Balanced Slave. Junzao up on energy production per tick. Useful if you're prioritizing air. And although the Air Force looks of similar size, there's now twice the number 
of swift wins in it than when we did our last appraisal. Some 16 T2 fighters in the mix there. The longer that goes on, the harder it's going to be for Balanced Slave in these fights. Cybern, of course, no access to a T2 dedicated fighter. They have the Corsair fighter bomber, which is stronger in the air than the interceptor, but not as good at air-to-air -air combat as the swift wind. For obvi obvious reasons, Balanced Slave Noob taking the defense of his homeland personally. There we go. 9,000 hit points on that Cybran commander. Another air battle brewing over the water. Might not seem significant, but if Jun Zhao can arrest air control out from underbalanced slave here and it looks like he's done just that look at the difference a few extra swift winds make and now that will open the game up to more gunship play got a little group of about four of them over here for Jun Zhao where are they headed heading out down here but the number of factories down here is growing all the time and in fact we have a T2 land HQ on Hostile territory, so that is a major target of opportunity for Jun Zhao if he can kill it. I'm actually surprised Jun Zhao hasn't managed to oust Balanced Slave from down here. But uh, there is the battle, of course, going on in the sea, and that's worth mentioning. We've got five operational naval yards for Balanced Slave and one for Jun Zhao. So if that's allowed to continue, that could be a major problem. If we start getting some tech on that side of things and start seeing some cruisers dotted about, this swift wind advantage goes away real fast. Certainly cuts down his mobility and where he can go. 21 minutes gone. Balanced Slave now pulling ahead in eco, or was that a sustained reclaim grab? And then he dips, so he's power locked at the moment. I think once he gets his power sorted out, he is. He's up some 12, 11, 12 mass, something like that. More than almost sort of 15 mass at times. Power locking is an issue. Needs to get his eco sorted out. He's currently up. Is that he's an upgrade to T3? So he's concerned, obviously, by the presence of those swift winds. Doesn't want to lose air dominance. A lot of aerial targets in play for Jun Zhao, who now engages some of these frigates with torpedo bombers going to lose a lot of those as they fly right into the pile of interceptors that were lying in wait for them. But they did take down a couple of frigates with them. But yeah, major investment underway. And uh, well, he's managing to just about tread that line of eco balance. Just keeping enough power in the tank. And there is the completion, but of course, building ASFs, that's a whole new kettle of fish when it comes to power. And answer in the comment section below, what's that about? Kettle of fish. Never understood that one. And while you're down there, love, hit like and subscribe, will you? Because it does wonders for my ego, and that's the most important thing here. Blazes on enemy territory. Balanced Slave's going to bring his comm out and put it in between his uh, enemies and engineers which are working on some T1 point defense back here. One online and operational already. Second one will complete. Gunship attack moving out but hello what's going on down here? Major spam push as well from Balanced Slave. We're going to have to go to split screen to keep an eye on these two different theatres. Lots of things happening. Gunships roaming around. While we're in split screen, let's just get rid of the mini-map so we can see better. 
roaming around castrating balance slaves eco Jun Zhao on the back foot retreating with his commander in the face of a heavy inbound T1 and T2 spam incursion gunships hovering over this natural bay area here they're still alive despite being engaged by what's left of balanced slaves air force they've got a huge escort detail with them Jun Zhao down to about 10,000 hit points out of 14,200 what's the impact on the eco side of things Jun Zhao on about 96 balanced slave down to 92 and that might get worse as these gunships seem to be able to pick targets at their leisure. But having said that, this ground push is working out pretty nicely for Balance Slave. There goes the T2 land factory on the main landmass at the bottom for Jun Zhao. Jun Zhao still shadowing this troop movement with his comm just over here in this little lagoon area. That's the last land factory on this bottom right landmass for Jun Zhao. There are some Wagners in here, some amphibious units, but look out! Balanced Slave under gunship attack. He's got no inbound air force to assist him. He's got engineers working on Seeker turrets to try and shoot these T2 gunships down, but it's not a lot of damage. In come the Thistles, but I think it's all over. Boom, baby! Almost on the nose of 26 minutes, Balanced Slave Noob, who was actually slightly ahead on Eco, but it was a very, very slight margin, just came unstuck at the end. Total mass between the two, 98k for Jun Zhao and 111k for Balanced Slave Noob. But towards the end there, thanks to the gunships going around assassinating all of the mexes, that balance was already shifting. Kill loss ratio, we can see it there, 0.8 for Jun Zhao versus 0.4. That tells the story of where we got to. But still, it was a very close run thing. That bottom landmass down here in the bottom right completely capitulating to that ground pressure from Balanced Slave Noob because of this base that was never dealt with. Jun Zhao, despite pushing forward with various groups of units and his commander, wasn't able to get rid of this little infection. And it just metastasized until he took the entire continent. If he'd have been able to eke it out, if this hadn't taken him down, if he'd have been able to hold on to air control just a little bit longer, he might have been able to eke something out. We saw the way things were potentially going on the naval side of things. This was a much bigger investment that Balanced Slave Noob made than Jun Zhao did. We've still only got one operational naval yard spitting out the occasional frigate for Jun Zhao. And uh, this navy was kept at bay, of course, periodically by little groups of torpedo bombers that were brought to bear. But look at that. That was quite a horde of tridents. And if they were sent further south, they might have been able to start putting pressure on the main base. They don't have a huge range. But uh, yeah, one cruiser, one Salem into the mix. It might have been a very different story. But hey, Jun Zhao's gamble worked. He went for air and he made it pay. Fantastic work. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. If you want to see more, especially 1v1 ladder action and especially Balanced Slave, who unfortunately didn't win out today, you can check out the Patreon if you haven't done so already. He was in another ladder match, which we covered on there this week. It's a mere dollar a month, guys. It's uh, not a big investment, but there's plenty of in interesting content there for you to get stuck into. So do consider that, and it massively helps me out as well. All right, guys, that's enough for today. Hope you stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.